Coming up, we're saying goodbye to Lord Darkanon on this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. I was trying to think of something from the ride to say, sorry. Yeah, well, first off, Rhino, it's not a ride. It's an experience. Oh, my friend was like, oh, we rode that when we were there. And I was like, you mean you stood it while you were here? Because yeah. you stand. Uh, 20 minutes of standing that they warned you multiple times. Yeah. It's going to be long, so if you don't want to stand in dark places for 20 minutes, maybe you shouldn't go here. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Poseidon's Fury. That's what this is about today. More uh, like Craig's sarcasm. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I'm a sarcastic person, but also <laughs> joining us today is another person besides my co-host. We are joined by Erica Resnick. Hi, friends. Solely because she doesn't want to go home. <laughs> but she can't stay here. Sorry, in this oh, she show, can't stay here. I'm in the show, we don't lie about motivations. So uh, she doesn't want to go home. So she's like, I have the option of going home and being alone. No, no, or I can sit here and do this. That is not what she said. She said, "There's nothing for me there." It was <laughs> a little more, yeah. de- a little more sad than, that, than how you said. There's nothing for me to do right now at home. <laughs> well, the good news is this is uh, in the future. We live in a time right now where. Poseidon's Fury is now closed, so if you went to Universal and said, I want to do Poseidon's Fury, there's also nothing for you there. Exactly. It's, that's where we're at here. S out of luck. What? S out of luck. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was just saying the one letter. I understand yeah. now. I finally figured it out. So uh, <laughs> I think we've laid it on thick enough now, but we are going to be talking about Poseidon's Fury on this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Dis- Dis- uh, well, Universal well, Edition. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. He got that sweet <laughs> molasses in his mouth. Today. Yeah, sure. Uh, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to decide: uh, does it deserve to? Uh, does it deserve to have a legacy well beyond its time at Universal? An opening day attraction at Islands of Adventure that obviously went through changes, uh, and people made the closing a very big deal. Did it warrant it? They were. Should we remember it forever? <laughs> We'll discuss that in just a bit. Before we get there, I want to remind you that this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Okay. Now, of course, we're recording this a little bit early before the release, so I can say wholeheartedly that Rhino and I have experienced Poseidon's Fury within the last 24 hours, so we're coming at this with a fresh perspective and one not necessarily of love for this attraction. We didn't get the shirts. <laughs> we did not buy the shirts. Uh, and Erica, when's the last time you've actually done it? Um, it's probably been about like a solid, maybe like a year, year and a half. It's been a little bit. Okay. What was your original impression of it? Not like you told us a story before the show about when your uh, dad used to try to terrify you with mm-hmm. it. But in terms of this attraction, did you like it? Did you Were you not a fan of it? So, Where were you at? I thought it was okay. Um, I used it as a I need some air conditioning kind of moment. Um, and because I just used to laugh along, I think I kind of went just to laugh at the things that were happening throughout the experience not really um i just didn't think it was like a stellar performance though but you know the actors did what they had to do but it wasn't my favorite thing definitely was a more of a i need an air conditioning break so i'm gonna go stand for about 20 minutes yeah i (laughs) will say that uh in terms of air conditioning once you are in the interior portion of the queue unless there was so many people that it was uh you know there was a losing struggle between the air conditioning and the people in there it's it's a nice cool uh break away it was a nice cool break unfortunately not anymore now that it's not there and yeah having that extra darkness inside just always made it feel like yes this is a refreshing time away from just being out in the middle of the florida sun and uh you know you also have to sit here and question should 
the attraction has existed as long as it did, given that its best quality is, well, it's better than being outside. (laughs) 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 It sounds really mean. We're probably going to piss a lot of people off with this episode because I I feel like with Universal, every time they close something that was just okay, it's like people come out of the woodwork to profess their love for it. Actually, yeah, I love it. (laughs) Excuse me. They're like the people who are wearing thick frame, thick frame fashion frames that are exchanging mixtapes at an abandoned gas station for their hobby on the weekend. I'm just giving you a visual image of who you see there. Those are the people that show up for that last minute terrible attraction. Also, I wish if anyone is doing that mixtape exchange, I will accept invitations. So I'm not cooler than you. Okay. Well, thanks for making it awkward now. Uh, you're not going to get any invites to it. I know. I just, I just lost I a I think big, the yeah. kids make playlists nowadays, and that's all no, they do. No, you don't understand. The hip thing to do is to not do... That's the whole... This is why you can't come to the mixtape exchange. I'm fine with that. <laughs> it's like hipstery. <laughs> so, but I think the point still stands that... You know, I I was in the final showing of T2 back in whatever that was, 2016, 2017, and I wasn't a fan of T2 ever really. Like, it, it was fine for what it was. It wasn't a bad show, but, like, it, again, people just, like, lost their minds with it. Like, this was the greatest theme park 3D show ever, and, like, I, I don't know. Something about it with Disney, it, maybe it's just, like, it's two different audiences or something with it but for some reason with universal it always feels like it's super extra passionate when something goes away and the people line up for it and in this case like yeah buying t-shirts that's the only merchandise they made for it which is better than nothing i appreciate that you know i'm glad they did that but i'm like that's one of those ones where i'm not judging anyone but i looked at it and for a second i was like "Ooh, that's a cool shirt maybe i should get that shirt and then i thought about it and i was like no, that would that would join all of my anniversary shirts that I have for like the parks when there's a special, uh, you know, like Disney parks in particular, when it's like Animal Kingdom's 20th anniversary. Why did I need to buy a shirt to commemorate the 20th anniversary of one theme park that eventually that just it, it leaves me. And that's happened to some of the shirts I've bought at like attraction closings and such over the years. It's like, man, it, it's it's gone now. It's gone forever. I don't need to keep those memories. But. Don't try to take my Halloween Horror Night shirts from previous years. I'll slash you. Don't Don't take my shirts. Here's what you do. You just get fatter like me, and then you don't fit in them anymore. You know, two things. Well, you know, I always future-proof by buying one size up. But two things. Don't take my shirts. Don't steal my sesame cake. Don't stop (laughs) eating my sesame cake. Wow, what a cut. Deep yep. cut. We got to do that every now and then. So uh, we've been talking now for 10 minutes, and we haven't gotten into the attraction It's itself, because this so. is way more entertaining than the attraction. Honestly, the hard part with this... We don't have the effects, though. Is... Erica, throw your water bottle up in the air. <laughs> yeah. So the hard part with this is I also, like... Okay, we are going to go over the plot of the attraction and stuff to the best I, of our ability. I have something I just learned that I want to share when we yeah. in, in pretty early on. No, 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 about the attra- about. A person that is in the attraction. Yeah, we, we will get there. So uh, the background, uh, the attraction, like I mentioned, was an opening day attraction at Universal's Islands of Adventure. And it went through uh, rehab in 2001 because it was not popular. So the oh. original story was slightly different there. It was just a, a little, you know, it. The bones were all there, but a different storyline. So they did an overhaul for it. And uh, that's the attraction that we know today is Poseidon's Fury with it, you know, with Taylor, our very favorite tour guide, Taylor, which I will admit the first time I ever did this, I was that dumb person who was like, wow, they have all the audio for Taylor. What happens if there's ever a tour guide in here (laughs) whose name isn't Taylor? (laughs) <laughs> you're like what do they do for the girl <laughs> you're like uh yeah they did the same thing what was it lonnie at at um uh disaster i forget the name with disaster I think but it was, i think it was lonnie. i hate I when they remember. do that because like I, I it doesn't fool me anymore but it really did for that time i'm like wow they said taylor right in there is someone in the back doing the voices like monsters inc and that's <laughs> how they knew taylor watching. i'm an idiot but uh we're gonna do our best here to go through the 
plot and the feelings of the attraction. Again, Rhino and I just did this 24 hours ago, and we left the attraction. <laughs> <laughs> the 20-minute long attraction, we left it. We got outside. We we saw our friend, said hi, and walked away after that. And the first thing I said to Rhino was, how would we describe the plot of this and what we just did? And so this maybe was like 15 to 20 minutes after when all was said and done. And we just kind of had nothing. <laughs> like, I was like, I think we were walking for a... <laughs> There was a trident and somebody was angry. <laughs> I was like, there's a big fight. Yeah, there is a big fight. And so I'm going to use this uh, website, tvtropes.org, to help me with this along the way, too, uh, just to, you know, to maybe try to make a little bit more sense with it. You've probably done it before. If you've never done it, uh, you don't get a chance. So it really doesn't matter. This is all, we don't even need to do this at this point. It's just fun to try to describe what we experience because we are not eloquent when it comes to this. And uh, you know what? Outside of the queue, when you're first approaching it, absolutely beautiful and stunning. Lost Continent, you know, I was never there for the heyday. I've only seen it as it is now and uh the the area is just so beautiful the giant statue of poseidon crumbled to the ground the the hand still in the air holding the trident his head his feet they're all there and it's a beautiful beautiful exterior one of the best uh that ever was in my opinion so i don't want it all just to be you know ripping on this attraction the the outside at least was great the exterior is is gorgeous Yeah. yeah The whole land has really nice architecture because Mythos mm-hmm. with the Mythos the, Mythos with the vomiting water statue and like it, it, that whole area is very well like it was very well created. I do. I, I, agree I think with that. I think Islands of Adventure honestly pretty much has like did really good like really in your face theming yeah. with everything. Mm-hmm. I agree with that, and you know you're there to to be led on a tour and expedition and so you enter into the building of that temple and you know I, for people who have been to Disneyland you know I love I love this section too because it reminds me so much of Indiana Jones Adventure uh, out in Disneyland and you know it reminds me of Revenge of the Mummy I love a good like excavation archaeological dig site type of theming to it you know it's it's kind of bare bones but something about it still works and for a second it does trick you into being like how far down did i go how deep am i in this and if this all collapses on me (laughs) will i ever make it out no we don't know if doors close in this attraction and don't reopen how will you get out (sighs) how through jeremy's little people we're not Jeremy Taylor. <laughs> what the hell's Jeremy? <laughs> what was, who is Jeremy? Who's Jeremy? <laughs> what? I don't even know someone named Jeremy. Can we get that on a shirt? Jeremy's people. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the Barney? What's Barney? <laughs> Mr. Peekaboo. <laughs> that was Barney. A day in the park with Barney. Yeah. Our very, very favorite, Mr. Peekaboo. Well, Mr. Peekaboo uh, and Taylor are now sharing a sharing a little hut somewhere, I imagine. I love that. Sad. Yeah. Somewhere in That's the... their backstory. They've started a new land. Oh, can like... somebody draw that up? Can somebody make <laughs> that be like I want to read that like comic book or something where it's like what happens to the theme park characters when their attraction clothes? <laughs> nope. No one do it. That's our story. We're doing it. They, go, it. they all go to the universal heaven. So you know you've got, <laughs> got, got you've got Doc Brown in dead. there. You've got one of the sharks from Jaws. No, Doc <laughs> Brown isn't in there because he still shows up in the park. Uh, Biff's yeah. there. Biff, that would be a good point. Yeah, Biff, Biff, he's in heaven. Uh, I doubt Jimmy it. But Neutron. Sure. Like, Jimmy Neutron's in heaven. Yeah. All of the Hanna Barbera hey, <laughs> characters are in heaven. Is J- so does Jimmy Neutron a tot? <laughs> no, he's definitely an angel. An angel. Uh, <laughs> and you know, it's listen. If they still have characters in the park, I don't know if I want to count them. So I might throw Doc Brown in there. Uh, for me, Lucy, she's in heaven <laughs> as well too. Uh, we miss Lucy a tribute very much. That was one of that my favorite walkthrough attractions for sure. Uh, the, the list can go on and on of all the people in this universal heaven, right alongside <laughs> one of the the T one thousands and. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. So many things have closed there over the Arnold's years that like up. I can't yeah. even remember them all. I'd like I want to make the easy joke and say Angela Lansbury from the Murder <laughs> She Wrote attraction, but she's actually dead. Yeah, so isn't some other people you just mentioned too. It got dark. Lucille Ball is not with us anymore. Why? So you know. Yeah. Color me shocked. 
Well, color I'll call her you Burnt Sienna since that was her hair color. Well, tell fine. me, at least confirm to me that the sharks from Jaws are still alive. Yeah, I, I saw Meg. I think they live to be like a million years old. <laughs> I believe it's the Meg. The Meg. Meg yeah. 2. Meg Ladon is... when, you, when you call it Meg, it sounds like you're trying to shorten the title for M. Freakin. Oh, I just, so. I'm that friendly with her now. Yeah. Oh, Meg. Yeah, she's Meg. Okay, back to this attraction. Inside, feel like it'll cave in. Universal heaven. I think we got there. <laughs> Jeremy's people, once again. Jeremy's people. Uh, <laughs> just make that the name of the episode. Jeremy's Jeremy. people. People be like, what? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very strange uh, Pearl Jam song. <laughs> yeah. So it's the sequel to Jeremy. Jeremy's people in heaven. Oh, my God. This is why no one watches the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or it's why people used to watch a show and we don't have as much fun anymore. I'm not quite sure with it, but too much uh, people chatter in this new episode. <laughs> so you're there for your little tour. Uh, Professor Baxter is supposed to be the one who's giving you the tour of the temple. Uh, his bumbling assistant, Taylor, I believe it's an assistant, you know, maybe like uh, what, what do they call when it's like a professorship a research assistant? Kind of, yeah, kind oh, of like, like a TA kind of. Yeah, it's all <laughs> we're just playing off different words of assistant yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like a, you know assistant. It's, it's his mentor assistant and stuff but you mean uh, like a fellowship okay you know what it doesn't matter is this his fellowship assistant it doesn't matter <laughs> spoiler alert we never get to see professor baxter he's he's just not there he's he did. Not nowhere there. to be found he's not in there but taylor is and taylor is he's not in he's not a fool but he's also you know he's not prepared to I lead this said tour full and i'm like full what <laughs> He's not full of brains. He's not fully there. He's not. But he's he's kind. You know, like like so many people who sometimes set off the plots and motions of attractions, if he was just a little bit smarter, then maybe things wouldn't have gone as poorly as they did. Because you're standing in this chamber with these beautiful mosaics up on the wall uh, depicting Poseidon, uh, Lord Darkanon, and... You know, you're in there. The doors are closed, uh, seemingly like a haunted mansion scenario. There's no way out, no way in. Uh, there is the little hole that Taylor <laughs> climbed through. That's what I down meant. The- by Jeremy's people. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. <laughs> it's the hole that the assistant <laughs> comes out of. Jeremy's people. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what you meant, but if it is, yeah. beautiful. It is what I meant. <laughs> you know, that's where my logic gets in. I don't remember the people closing at any point with that. <laughs> <Did he? laughs> but if why wouldn't we just climb out of the yeah, people? Why wouldn't we go escaped. one by one, climb up the ladder and get out? It's not ADA accessible, yeah. but <laughs> Maybe that's it. I feel like season two of The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, it, is that is that the entire like premise for the attraction? Is we could get out this way, but Jeremy's but it's not ADA is not accessible. accessible, so we have to find another way out. Now, I I'm shocked the the actor ran out of that peephole, anyways, because it looked. I would be like, if this was me, somebody definitely has run into that roof because it is like a four foot tall peephole. I don't. I don't know what defines the people. It's just a hole in a wall. I don't know what else you call it. Mouse trap. Well, let's not. Mouse hole? Let's not. Let's let's take a hard beat on describing holes because we could go down a very <laughs> very rough uh, path with this one. But uh, yeah, Taylor pops out of the people and starts talking about the the temple that you're in. He starts telling the story of. Uh, everything that happened between Poseidon and Darkanon, Lord Darkanon, you know, they became enemies and they fought battle against each other. Uh, Taylor, again, not being full of brains, uh, there's there's a darkness in the room and there's a black light effect where then Taylor reads out this spell, this incantation that you can't see in the normal lighting, but you can, you know, you can after the, the darkness with it. And he reads out the spell and that of course, brings Lord Darkanon to life. Darkanon! Uh, Darkanon, he came back in the big way. uh, And, you know, Darkanon, he traps you. He doesn't want you to be free, which I understand that. If I was an overlord god, is he a god technically? Kind of. If someone asks him. But, yeah, you're trapped in there, and then you have to get out. Now, Rhino, here's the first problem. How the heck did we get out of the first room? 
Um, the doors opened up, but I don't remember. I only remember because it was a cast member with a goatee, and it was like a very, like, he looked like he was in a rock band type of a goatee, and I was like, that guy's got a real intense goatee, and it's pretty cool. It was like, hey, concert hall isn't open yet. Yep. That's what it was, the vibe it was giving me. I think... Wait, did Darkanon let us out I of the room to go find... Yeah. The, because he wanted to get Poseidon's trident. Yes. And so I think he did let us out of the first room to trap us into the next room so that way we could look for the Poseidon the Poseidon's trident. Yes. I think it was a uh, you we can't go out but we can go deeper. No. No. <laughs> yeah, that's no, no, the no, next no, that room. Is right. That's that the is next right. room. No. no. No, 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 you are right though. They said like we can't get out. He sealed the door for us to get out of the temple, but we can go deeper into the temple. That's 100% what happened. Well, I remember it now clear as day. I think Christina Pickles says that part. I She might have said it too, but... Oh, um, Monica. But I, you are right. The door to get out was sealed. The only way to go through the temple was to go deeper into the temple. And 100% Darkanon wanted that trident. The sad thing about this is I plan on going there right after we're done recording this, and I'm probably going to do it like four, three times-ish. I don't know what the wait time is right now because uh, it is the last day. I'm, I'm going to save my express for like the perfect time for it So and probably wait in that standby line way too long for two of them. I'll probably understand a lot more, or I won't. It doesn't matter. We've already recorded this, so that's why we have to do it to the best of our ability. But we move from that one room that's all flat leveled, and we move into the next room, which is basically a tiered level room. And uh, that's so everyone is able to have a nice, good view. Uh, Taylor moves on into the next room and it's looking bad. It's looking like we're going to get stuck. We're not. There's no way out. We're not going to find a way out. Taylor is looking for anything around the room to pry the door open. He really wants to. Uh, This silly guy, of course, he pulls out the trident and he goes he, he wants to pry the door open and that is then when i believe rhino's uh, favorite celebrity cameo of this pops up and is trying to be like hey you've got to you've got to give that trident to poseidon so they can have this battle darkanon can't have it and at the very least don't use it to pry the door open he wants to pry the door open but he doesn't pry the door open and then she gets on screen and starts talking. I zoned out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I remember her talking, but she wasn't very helpful. There's something about the trident, and then why does it open in the next room? I don't remember. I just I remember think, thinking. Isn't she leading us to the next spot? No, <laughs> she's not, because she was like, you can't, I can't help you. Because she said you can have whatever you desire, one wish or whatever. And he was like, I want to get out. And they're like, I can't do that. And you're like, well, what's? are you a genie or who are you? You're you are Chandler, not Chandler. You are Ross and uh, Monica's mother from Friends. It's Christina Pickles. Guess what I just learned? What? She's British. Oh, in real life, all these years, never knew. Oh, there's a toe in my kitchen. I don't think I knew that. That but was from you know the what? Thanksgiving episode where Chandler chops his toe off by accident. <laughs> I'm. I, I Are you mean, looking up Christina Pick? She's famous. When you look her up, it says she's most famous for playing a nurse on a show, Saint Elsewhere. And I'd be like, I would argue she's most famous for playing Monica's mother with Richard Gooley. Gooley. No, that's not it. Richard. Who's the father? Elliot Gold. Yeah. No, Richard, what I am. What? What I'm trying to look up with it is why, what, <laughs> what that character is trying to say to us to allow well, us out to the next only to, in that one room to the too. Vortex so she was room. useless yeah i know what the uh, what the heck oh here someone wrote down what taylor says during the first room and if you're wondering why i don't have this as like we don't have a video reference of this it's probably in the show but basically rhino and i went and on the one that like i was going planning on recording everything they were it, they they tried to stay with the no recording of any type. Yeah. No, it's like, dude, it closes tomorrow. Everyone's going to be recording the final walkthrough of this and everything before. Just who cares? Who cares? It's going away. But so uh, I 
it got to the point where you get to the water tunnel and at that point everyone stopped caring and at that you know the ride the attraction now i'm saying it's a ride to jeremy's people well, you, uh, at that like point it's, you're at the final you're at the finale and then it's like what's the point of doing it so uh i yeah i don't have i was like surely someone has to have a good breakdown that i can give them credit for what happens in this attraction uh this one actually this this one might not be bad but um do they have why you're able to get in there so i'm i'm reading off a theme park tourist website right now to see what it says and you know what i'm gonna say from that room you go into the water tunnel talk talk about it the vortex tunnel water tunnel you like it dislike it oh i think it's the coolest part of the entire attraction i that when i first saw that as a kid i was immediately like wowed i was like you can walk through the water um and that wow factor never went away as i got older so i just think it's a really cool effect that they have and like i said probably the best part of the attraction in my opinion oh i agree i i i think it's a really cool effect and the fact that you get to like walk through it is really cool i'm always like it's gonna collapse on us i don't want to get wet like um but it it's that that's really fun and then you're in another room Mm -hmm. and it's like I mean, I guess well, we'll talk about it. Doesn't that lead you? That leads you to the, the ending finale. scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which I always get cool worried. Effect. It's just going to stop working when I'm walking through it. Oh, because because there was like water on the bridge when yeah. we were coming through, and I was like, "Where's that water coming from? Like, <laughs> is it like a refrigerator door? Does it stop doing this when it closes?" And I was like, "A we because we also were the last to walk through, and I was like, "Oh God, it's going to stop <laughs> on us." And I'm like, "I can't handle this. We just got here." Well, that just made me think: is is it always on? It must have to be yeah. right. I, I, it never I would assume. Stop? Is this going to be the first time it ever stops? Well, Otherwise, it would just all splash straight down, and like it's there's moisture on the ground, but not like no here, soaked moisture. I don't know. It's I think it's got to be one of those like a swirly tunnel that then they slowly add the water into it to turn it on. But when it stops, when it stops, it must stop slowly, and then the water I assume would maybe drip to the bottom. Guys, I don't yeah. know science. I don't know science. I don't know earth. I don't know density. I, other than it being the thing that brought Marty's dad to the to the mom, I don't know anything about it. You were my density. See, I'm looking. Are you looking for it. Christina Pickles? I, I found I found it all now. So what I'm like, uh, what I'm seeing there is that uh, the reason we were able to get into the second chamber was because Darkanon did invite the crowd to follow in the steps of Professor Baxter. And that's how you get into the second chamber. So that does make sense that, uh, you know, Taylor read the whole thing. The the demon sleeps and he wants the trident's pet gold power Poseidon, blah, blah, blah. I'll read it all verbatim. Fine. Since you asked again, I'm giving credit to theme park tourists for writing this down. I'm going to laugh if this was like for the original attraction, but no, it's Taylor. So it says it all here. So behind this wall, a demon sleeps an ancient evil held in keep Poseidon's power contained the beast, but he too perished when battle ceased. Let none disturb this chamber wall or lose the loose, the dark in <laughs> lose all but if this evil should be released then seek the trident restore the peace for he who holds the trident gold has poseidon's power for all time told you know what it makes sense it's so close to sue silent sue's landing oh it's like right there so i think Good also rhymes. i had trouble with the following the rhyme while he was doing it so i, was I just, just like, read it and i still don't understand yeah. a single thing i said I uh you moved into the second room because dark and on let you and then once you were in there yeah taylor was looking around for the trident. he wasn't looking for the trident he was trying to find a way out stumbled upon the trident when he got the trident that's when we woke up pickles and at that point uh you know pickles is in the room and says as rhino tried to correct me on it i can't let you out but I can move you forward. Mm. And so, yeah, uh, the dark one sealed the chamber, so you can't get out. But Ross yeah, was always go. our favorite. <laughs> he was the favorite child. And you can go further and further in. So uh, then the uh, then Pickles ends up doing the, the spell that she has to do, doing, well, according again to theme park tourists, Lord of the Seas, I ask for your care. Safe passage grant for those who dare. Open your oceans, swing wide the door. Let the waters rush and the oceans roar. For now is the time with fortune unplanned. Your trident comes home. Return to your hand. Then we get into the water tunnel. We've said enough about it. It's pretty cool. 
pretty cool stuff. The best part of this attraction. Uh, you move into then another room, which seems very uh, closed off. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this thing, what, like one small room to the next and you're on this tiered seating again but that's when one of the uh coolest things gets to happen and it's like very much a uh very much that effect that i feel like is done in so many places now in theme parks where let's use a flash of light and some blindingness to hide the fact that we're going to open up walls and all of a sudden you're going to be in this massive place. I mean, it's happening on Cosmic Rewind. It happened Mickey's Philhar Magic. No, wait. Mickey, no yeah, flash. Mickey's Philhar Magic, but well, it yeah. doesn't do a flash. No, it does, it flashes. when the theater first comes yeah. up and mm-hmm. you're in the world, you don't realize that the theater moved down. You see it come down, but they trick you on the going up. Mm-hmm. So, a very cool theme park effect every time it happens and you're in this massive room taylor restores the trident to poseidon and that's when poseidon and lord dark lord darkenon get into an ultimate battle good versus evil one has to win one has to lose spoiler alert it's poseidon he wins straight out of a 80s b movie <laughs> yeah uh, you know what though I- i'm sorry the it's kind of cool at the end. The, the last room when they're fighting back and forth in the water fountains, the videos done for it are all terrible. Oh, like yeah, this awful. is the like I can imagine in the early 90s and 2000 or the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, this all felt like really, really awesome, but it just feels so dated in the year of 2023. And uh, the, the effects were cool and it definitely was a banger way to end it. But Oh, not just cheesy. And it's still like, I think, oh man, so bad. It's good. No, I, I, it, my problem with it is that like all this stuff, it, when we, the first room we were in, they had like good surround sound when they're trying to be like dark and coming from everywhere. And then the sound quality just degrades as you go through and it becomes like this flat mono sound that I can't really like it your house where you watch a movie has better sound than what you're watching on this thing. So it kind of pulls you out of it a little bit, I feel like. So it's like that weird, it wants to be bad, but good. But I'm like, I think it's just, I don't know. It's I weird. like the fire. The costumes are weird. I like the fire effects yeah. in yeah. this and the water and the effects. The water effects are cool. But just the the fighting scene, it, sh- it just makes me laugh. It's yeah. called toxic masculinity and I didn't care for it. Fantastic. Did not care for the Godfather. Yeah, I, you know what? I will not miss this attraction. Anything they put in the space is better. Was it an achievement in theming and effects? Maybe. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, definitely for a time. But for 1998, uh, sure. Yeah, it's just so much space. There is so mm-hmm. much space in that area. They can do something great with it all and i you know what i know there are fans out there who bought up those t-shirts and that are they were the first in line this morning to get the wristbands to be in the final tour for the end of oh, this attraction that? i thought it was a very smart way to handle it yeah there was uh you went and you picked up a wristband and once they ran yeah. out that was out but now you don't have to like have that fight of everyone pushing of who's going to be the last to get in because yep. that's always the most awkward thing. It's like it makes sense when it's a brand new attraction. You're like, who's going to be first in? But it's super awkward when it's who's going to be last because everyone's like standing in a semicircle. Like it's, I'm not going. I'm I'm, I'm going to be last. It's not going to be me. Like, well, someone has to. Someone has to be last. But yeah, it's a. Uh... Our Taylor was good when we did the show yesterday. I will say that. Whoever yep. was playing Taylor, you were very good. I thought you were great. They hold a lot on their shoulders, has Taylor. Yeah. I will say that. And, you know, I I like I don't necessarily like walkthrough attractions, but I do think that, you know, it's if you have another attraction that goes in that doesn't employ actors, I which I fully expect, I also miss that aspect of it because it's one of those things where it's just it provides something different where it's not always that that mindset of well all of the team members or all the cast members at disney help make the story come to life like sometimes having that actor that one person that the light shines on them brings it to to life in a different way and if you have an engaged tailor they elevate how cheesy pretty much all of it is and uh yeah it's it's kind of it stinks to lose something like that it stinks to lose something that's unique in its effects and the design but 
it's a lot of space and I'm, I'm done with it. I'm yeah, done. I, I just, the whole, when they announced it was closing, my immediate thought was one, I feel bad for all of the actors and actresses that are working um, for this attraction and have put like their heart and soul into it. But that area just has so much space and something so cool can be put in there, especially if they utilize that whole building and make it something that's like a dark ride kind of attraction. Um, it just that area can be used for something so much better. And I think this attraction overstayed its welcome, but I think it had a purpose for a while. But I think it's okay to close that chapter now and say, let's do something a little better. Yeah. Do we think it deserves to be listed among the all-time greats of Universal next to Jaws, Back to the Future, The Ride, Lucy, A Tribute, Dragon Challenge? Oh, you you asking me? <laughs> I'm asking. I'm posing that question. To I'm going to tell you right now. No. And I'll tell you exactly why. We experienced it yesterday. And we walked out of the ride and we said, what was that about? And I think that right there is how I'm going to feel in a year from now. I won't be able to remember any of this. Two years from now, I'll be like, what's Universal Orlando? Three years from now, they find out something's wrong with my brain. It got real dark. No. Um, but seriously, I I do think for that very reason alone, I thought about it yesterday when we walked out and we were like, what exactly did we just experience? Muddy story. So I was like, I don't understand it. I, I, I'm inclined to, I was inclined to say yes, because it is opening day and because the area and the exterior of that attraction is very well themed. But honestly, other than, I don't think, I don't think a water tunnel and some splashy effects make you worthy of being in a Universal Hall of Fame. This isn't Six Flags, honey. It's mm -hmm. Universal Orlando Resort. Wow. Yeah, I said honey for emphasis. I, yeah. I That's agree. toxic masculinity. I yeah. agree with you on that. I feel like if there was more of like a, a tiered system in that, I would put this like on the bottom tier of like <laughs> things to remember. Well, a Hall of Fame is really for the best of the best. But <laughs> as for like putting it, you know, next to the best of the best, no. no. You, yeah, because I otherwise, so you got to tell me, you know, someday it'll definitely be in there. You tell me this ride deserves to sit next to like uh, a Velocicoaster? Well, Jeremy's people, again, is not Jeremy's a ride. Jeremy's people, maybe I'd put in there. <laughs> if this was a ride through all of this, maybe that would be different. I, I think it, in my ma mind, will go down the same way the Sinbad show did. I yeah. cannot remember one single second about it or what it even looked like. Ryan, I don't know if you ever saw it. I don't think I did. You, I thought you claimed I saw it with you. And I was like, no, I didn't. And yeah. you were like, yes, you did. You sat with me. And I was like, no, I didn't. Yeah, I think it might have been Oliver. You son of a... I'm not sure. I don't remember well enough. Son of but a people. You might not have seen it. So. I, did, I, I don't think I did. Yeah. So it, that would... Ex then that makes me feel a little bit better about but, the memory problems. But it is easy. Does this go down next to Forbidden Journey, to Hagrid's, to Velocicoaster, to Spider-Man? Does no. it go next to all of these or the classics over at Universal Studios Florida? No, absolutely not. And uh, I'm happy that it probably made a lot of people happy over the years. And I cannot wait to see what comes next from it. I hope we don't have to wait too long for whatever it is. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's time is over, much like the time of Poseidon and Darkanon. Darkanon! <laughs> That's a Mariner yeah. reference from the Waterworld show at Universal Studios Hollywood. You know, uh, <laughs> I was considering explaining it, but then I'm like, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds explaining why you keep saying it like I that. I got you. And now at this point, we're at a minute <laughs> of added time just for that explanation. So I feel like we just knocked this one out, uh, you know, out of the park. That's an expression. Happy, Baseball. happy you were here. Happy to see you go. Not happy. I guess fine to see you go. Looking forward to who, who comes over next. And Taylor, wherever you are out there, stay away from Jeremy's people. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> so that's, I believe, I don't know if we accomplished anything in this episode, but at least we gave Poseidon's Fury a fond farewell. It gets two Jeremy Amen. peoples. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> okay. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the Disunplugged Universal Edition. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Uh, if you want to support us more, you're watching this on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Leave comments, questions, video suggestions. Let us know what you thought about Poseidon's Fury in the comments below. If you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave ratings and reviews when possible. But that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you, Erica. 
Yeah, you're thank welcome. Thank you, Rhino. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you, everyone out there, for taking the time to listen and watch us. We hope we stirred some happy memories in your soul. But now we will say goodbye. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. We'll see you again next week with another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. But remember, we still haven't changed the name. Bye.